So, did you hear about those three holes in the ground that are filled with water? Well, well, well. Greetings everyone and welcome back to another installment in the Phone Archive, a series in which I look at weird, strange, stupid and obscure phones from all over the globe for your entertainment. And this is part three in my iPhone clone month that I decided to do a couple of days ago. And with this one, I've got three iPhone 2G clones in front of me. So without further ado, let's dig into this. Now these three iPhone 2G clones, I don't know where I got them from, probably markets or something like that. Somewhere along my travels, who knows? I may even have got one from cash converters, but I'm not too sure. But for this review, I'm only gonna be mainly focusing on one of them. However, each one has something wrong with them. One is water damaged, Someone actually dropped one in water, which means they were using it. Or maybe they got mad and threw it into the ocean and then some scuba divers ended up finding it and went, ooh, what's this relic? Who knows? Uh, one has a touch screen that's faulty. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work. I'll power it on and we'll see if it does work. And the third one does work. But we are starting to get into the territory of they're looking like the iPhone 2G, for example. Let's just grab this one here. We've got our home button. We don't have any other weirdo buttons. It's all looking normal. We've got the earpiece at the top. There's no sensors, I believe. And this earpiece also doubles as the actual speaker on all of these units, by the way. There's only one speaker inside of them, and it's that one there. Earpiece and speaker. Some Motorola's use that, and some other devices use the same method, so... But I just thought I'd point that out. We've got the volume rockers on the side, and on the back, you can see it's... It's a, it's a little bit of a 2G clone. The black's supposed to be there, but that's okay. This is a Fuji Zone one. This one is the one with touch issues, but we can still check this one out. Now we've got our proprietary USB port, which a lot of you are still trying to guess as to what this is. It's a proprietary 12 pin USB connector. It's not micro USB A, B, mini USB A, B, not even USB C as some of you have guessed. Uh, no, that is it right there. It's far from it. Uh, we've got a little hole for a stylus. Two of these have styluses. This one does not. And these are all just still made of plastic. You've got the chrome plastic edges, the aluminium looking back cover, but no, it's just plastic still. And then you've got the camera at the top. This is probably a 0 0.3 megapixel one. I'm not expecting too much more than that. The only difference between all of these ones is their speaker grills in the back of these two, whereas the speaker grills are at the top just there. But it doesn't make a difference, as I said, there's only one speaker in here. So let's disregard that for a second and have a look at these two. So, yep, all still looking the same, just with a lot of fingerprints and stuff. Look at how many scratches. That means someone actually used these. It's just, it's sad. But sides, there you go. Top, there you go. Sides, there you go. Styluses, actually one's glued in. I can't get it out. That's okay. Proprietary USBs. And then on the back we have touch phone. Boop. Shouldn't do that because there's a big massive stain there. Don't know where that came from. And then this one, I love the eject. They've just stuck the eject logo there, but it's that, yeah. This is a photo viewer. Photo viewer, super MP3, digital player, digital audio player, USB flash disc with certifications. That means it's legit. Removing the back covers reveals a stylus that just fell out. Oh, out of all of them, the Fuji Zone is the only one with the instructions. Of all things, the pen calibration is in here. Didn't chuck it in the manual, you've chucked it on the back cover, that's that's fair. So, these ones are called the i9s. That's it, just i9. Touch phone i9 is what I'll probably call these ones. So that's it there, dual SIM, micro SD card is loaded. That's the one that works. This is the one we're gonna be reviewing today. Then this one here is water damaged. This is another i9, um, same thing, nothing special. And this is the Fuji Zone one, it's an i68 like the first one I had a look at in this series, that all of these motherboards are exactly the same. They all have the exact same specifications. Nothing is different. And if you're wondering why I didn't try and rebuild a touchscreen from this one to this one is because they're soldered down to the boards. I can't solder, so it doesn't really matter. But this one shows both IMEIs. It shows Made in China, GSM, GPRS. This one looks a little bit more legit. This is one with touchscreen issues, as I said. Putting them all together, you can definitely see that they are all the exact same device same motherboard. The only difference apart from the speed grills is the batteries. The i9 one here, which it says, use only the specified charger, store battery pack in a dry place, don't touch the metal items. Sue me. This battery may explode if damaged or disposed of in fire. 
yeah, it's slightly starting to swell, and it only holds charge for about 10 minutes or so. But this fits perfectly into the i9 ones, obviously. Then I've got a lithium ion one here, 950 milliamps. This one was 900. And this one is just the same on both sides. It's made in 2010, though. And then I've got this gold one here, which is 1000 milliamp hours, and that's 2009. This one fits in the Fuji Zone one, but there's gaps because this one fits into the Fuji but does not fit properly into there. The contacts don't line up. So this one's for that one, and then this one's for that one. This one's the one I'm going to use because it does fit in all of them. It's a bit loose, but that's okay. But this is the one that holds the most charge. And you know why? Because it's designed in USA, made in China. So I trust it. On my old channel, I did actually review all of these models. I did show that this was water damaged. I did show that this one worked and this one has a faulty touchscreen. You don't want to see that video. Here's a little snippet from it. I was literally using my camera flash to film it. The second one just says touch phone. Kind of looked like they tried to use the iPhone print, but uh, they kind of failed. And it just has a single thing that says camera. That's it. Jeez, those videos are so awkward to watch. Now I'm just going to do a quick comparison with the iPhone 3G. As we can see, they're getting there. They're starting to look like 2Gs, just, just a little bit. Thickness-wise, well, you know, it's a bit thick and obviously, well, it's not the same, but you get the whole idea of what's going on. But screen-wise, see? Oh, I've done a bit of a switcheroo. Which one's the real one? So 3.5, this would be probably, what, 3. Point... Wouldn't be just 3 inch, it'd probably be 3.2 at least. I could be wrong, but it just looks like it, judging from that. Anyways, this one is the one I'm going to use for disassembling because it's water damaged. So this one is later on in the video. As I said, all the same hardware, so it doesn't matter. This one is the main one we're going to use for reviewing. And this one I'm going to power on just to show you the applications that are installed in this. Because they're quite different to this one. And the OS looks slightly different as well. Okay, so with all that being said and done, put that to the side because we'll come back to that. And we'll focus our attention on the i9. Alright, so we just line up the contacts on the battery just like that. Spoilers. This battery is also used for a couple of other iPhone 2G clones that I have. You'll see them in a couple of days. I've got a micro SD card installed in here with MP3s, MP4s, 3GPs, and all that sort of good stuff on here. So we just go ahead and do that, like so. Stylus, let's go. That was painful, but, you know, they all do the same thing, pretty much. But look, slide to unlock straight there. <laughs> and there you go. Here it all is, in all of its glory. Once again, no lock button, because why not? So you just press home, and it locks it. Because one button does everything. It's the home button, it's the menu button, it's the back button, it's the lock button. It acts as every f***ing button under the sun. Alright, so let's go through this one show you the applications, do the tests and all that sort of stuff. So let's start with SMS. Now, just before I do that, you can't scroll along. Nothing happens, okay? So SMS, SMS, inbox. This never works. I, I don't know why. It's probably because I have no SIM card in, but I would say someone probably did use these on a day-to-day -day basis anyways. Uh, nothing in MMS, so that was quick. Uh, calendar looks like Minesweeper. If only they included Minesweeper. That'd be cool. Uh, calls, call history, nothing much. It's pretty bare bones, to be honest. Now, I will come back to the camera, but between this one and the Fuji Zone one, this is the better camera. It has more settings and stuff. The Fuji Zone, you cannot adjust any of the settings, which is really weird. Uh, calculator, looks like a calculator. There's no off button, and it works. Good. I don't know why I do this, but it works. I use the stylus to press the home button. In tools, we have currency converter, which is absolutely useless because it's not up to date. So, I mean, it gives you a rough idea, I guess. Ebook reader, do we have anything? No, unfortunately we don't, but you can read ebooks on these. And Bluetooth, yep. It has been paired with other devices, including a Samsung U300. Ooh, I think I do remember that one. And the LG KF300. And it was used with a Bluetooth headset or handset at one point. And an iDios, a Huawei. Someone was flaunting around with their uh, i9 touch phone going, yeah, look at this, and sending Bluetooth files from this to better devices. That That's fair. Okay. Settings we'll leave to later. Documents is just the file manager. Whoa. Two megabytes total of internal storage. 
the 34 kilobytes free. Wow. My memory card is 512 megs, but in the phone storage, images is nothing, audio is nothing, ebook is nothing. Now in photos, there's actually photos of someone's kid, so I'm not gonna show any of that. Uh, videos, there's nothing. Received, I know that this one here is actually a picture taken with another device, and it looks reasonable. You can sort of make out what's going on there. There's a car, and there's a pole, and there's some grass. So you get the general gist of it. Don't know what phone that was taken with. And third gen's a family photo, so I won't show that. And they're all marked 2008 as well, which would be about right for someone using this. And you got this photo here, which someone tried to take a photo, their finger got in the way, and uh, that's the result. But there's nothing else in storage here, so we are done with documents. But two megs of internal storage. I believe it's 32 megs that's built into this. It's 256 megabit, which is 32 megabytes. Uh, in notes, empty, clock, alarm. Looking very proprietary Java OS. Vladivostok, well, we're not even close. And stopwatch, is it the cat one? Yep, same thing. So it's the same as the previous clone in part two, which has been linked up here the whole time, but they've just slightly tweaked some settings around and it looks like this. Uh, service is WAP, data account management, once again, looking like the previous one. But there's Java. Java, hey? Nothing, nothing. So you know what that means? We're gonna try and install some Java games and see if they run. I forgot I can use the volume buttons to navigate. That might make things easier and you can hear it. Making a little noise there. I wanna play the ringtones. That's what I wanna do. We'll try and get the ringtones up and running. Uh, SMS, there's a keyboard there which doesn't look like the iPhone OS keyboard layout. It's just a very generic, use your stylus. Uh, does it even work? Oh, wait, what? Oh, it recognized it. Okay, so, yes, uh, H. E. Alan P. But why didn't it show anything? I have no idea. Uh, dial. There you go, you can switch between SIM cards if you want. Star hash, zero six hash. Oh, look at the colors, wow. There's IMI info, so that's all good. Uh, and multimedia, what do we got? We've got games, we've got image viewer, video recorder, video player, audio player, sound recorder, FM radio, and all the good stuff. So we'll come back to that, because we'll jump into settings. Dual SIM settings, can't do anything because no SIM installed. User profiles. Now, I think if we come into here, we can customize it, tone setup, we should be able to do this should be able to play them. Someone suggested to use the volume button, so you were right. Whoever you are.
Uh, okay. If there is a hell, that's the music that would be playing in it. That was god awful, but at least you got to hear the ringtones finally. Feel free to tell me what those are in the comments below if you want, but um, holy moly. I just went into extra tone. We've got warning, error, camp on, and connect. This is a public service announcement. This is only a test. Pen calibration? Nope, nope, not doing that. Go back. Nope. Phone setup, time and date, power on, language, input method, handwriting. Well, handwriting works. Sort of. Security setup, phone lock, change password, nah. Restore factory setting and sound effect. Audio effect, still dance. Have we got dance? No. Normal. Okay. Well, that's all for settings. This is where the video is going to drag on quite a lot, unfortunately. Because I want to show the Fuji Zone one, which has some different applications and stuff like that on it, but I don't want to dedicate it to another video. I want to do it all in just one. So it's probably going to go for a little bit longer than usual. So I'm sorry about that. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the camera. That was the James Bond shutter looking thing. Well, to me, it looked like that. I think that was actually the animation they used on the iPhones, I believe. Uh, but you've got the picture settings here, which look very similar to the previous clone with all the settings at the side. And if we go into options, camera settings, all that stuff. Image settings, 320 by 240, 640 by 480 we can go to though, which is what I did take the photos in, I think. And all that sort of stuff. And then if we go to multimedia and go video recorder, we can change it to high and that's it. So I've already taken photos, which is the first, I've already done that. So I'll splice them in for you here and enjoy what you're about to see. Alright, testing the video quality on the iPhone 2G clone, this one's the i9, as it is called, or the Touch Super, whatever the hell it is, and there's our frogs. We might have a better frame rate this time, I've just got to be a little bit quick because the battery is dying, that's all. It should last us. How you doing, Stuart? Still doing well? He's fine. Lemons? Ground, green, there was a wasp in here before, now it's gone. That's good. Yeah, I just quickly looked at them on my computer and they don't really look that good at all. So, uh, yeah, not the best for this one, but you know, at least it still works. It takes photos, it takes video. And I actually done the default settings for the camera before doing the test. I always do that. What you've seen is what I took. Yeah, images, 640 by 480, video. Well, I actually can't see video at the moment, but I think it's 176 by 144. Multimedia, I'm going to leave games till the absolute last. Uh, image viewer, we don't really need to see. Video player, actually, we can show the video that I did take on here, which is right here. So you can barely hear it, but it works. Uh, audio player. Oop. Yep, okay. Why not do the speaker test right now? Now I'm going to be using the same two songs from the Doom Eternal soundtrack, BFG 10,000 and Doomed Hunter, because they're both very different with sounds and stuff. Just for this clone series anyways, I'll just continue to use these two. After this, I might deviate and maybe use some non-copyright sound stuff as well, but I think Mick Gordon's stuff that he does for Doom is more than enough to show the sound capabilities of these units anyways. But you heard the sounds coming out of this thing for the ringtone, so uh, don't expect much for this. It's not loud at all, and it's dying. It sounds like it's dying. There will not be a Doom Guy gif bopping his head right there, I'll tell you that. Yeah, it sounds like it's dying, honestly. So we'll try the other one, where it's got a bit of bass to it, which, this'll be fun. Here we go. The bass is gonna kick in. The 
thumping bass that's on this song doesn't exist. Doesn't exist at all, but 97.7 we got to. But the speaker is just terrible. The previous one I had a look at with the dual speakers, that was so much better. Sound recorder looks exactly the same as the previous one, and we'll base the audio recording from the video that I took on this anyways. Uh, and we're left with FM radio. Please plug in earphone. All right. Got him. No, please plug in earphone. These do work because I did test them on one. Nah, earphone doesn't work, man. Damn it. Oh, well. You won't be missing out on much anyways because the speaker's not that great. It's a bit of a weird color choice. They've got green and purple going on. Okay. Sure, why not iPhone clone, i9, touch phone, super MP3 magic thing? I don't even know what this is really called, to be honest. So, we are left with Java and games. So, we'll go into games, because this is only quick. Game settings, sound effect, we want on, because why not? And then we'll go OK, and then we'll play puzzle, which is the... I was about to call it the Da Vinci Code. It's the Mona Lisa. I'm terrible, but same thing. Once again, that's close enough for me. Now, what if we were to go into the file manager, select my memory card, and come down to some Java games that I've got on here that I've pulled out of my random archive of Java games that I had on my N95 and 6230 and all those phones back in the day. So I've got Crash Twin Sanity, Tony Hawk's Underground, Blockbreaker Deluxe. So we'll start with Twin Sanity. Install. Yes. Oh my God. Is this actually going to work? Are you sure you want to? Yes. Invent a wonder phone. Yes. Did it do it? Oh. Oh, come on, man. Come on. You could... Yes. Uh, yes. No. It's gonna... <laughs> it plays Java games. <laughs> oh, I remember this. Oh, memories. How do I even play it? Okay, English, yep. Beautiful. Also available on console, you don't say. Now, a bit of a memory for me was that before downloading Java games off the internet and loading it onto the phones, you could call up a service and get them sent directly to your device. You would buy a magazine like a TV guide, and this is what my mum used to do. And you'd have the this magazine here and it'd have all the little games and stuff and it'd have the prices and you'd text the number and the code that you want and it would charge you on your credit that you have on your device and then you get the game sent to you. And some of these games were like 12 bucks, 15 bucks and stuff. I think Twin Sanity was like a $15 game or something. Yeah, I wonder if anyone else remembers doing that. You get ringtones and stuff as well, but the only one that I remember having was Snoop Dogg's Drop It Like It's Hot on my Alcatel 332 because I got a free download code for it. <laughs> so that was worth it. And it was so terrible. It was like, whoop, 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 whoop. It sounded so terrible. If I could find it and play it on the original 332, I would. Anyways, options. Uh, okay, we have a problem. Let's just confirm. 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 Yes. Oh, I thought this was to control it. Oh. If I press down. Up. Move, crash, move. Move. That sucks. You can install Java games, but you, you can't play them. You, well, you can play them. You can open them up, but you can't play them. Oh. So where would it be installed? Ah, just it. Okay. Okay, so let's try another one just to see what happens. Try Blockbreaker Deluxe. Couple of Motorola phones. Uh, most notably for me was the L6. I remember playing it on my L6. The screen was like this big, and um, yeah, it was a fun game. Blockbreaker Deluxe. It's really good, actually. Game Loft. Yeah, that's right. Memories of this. Yeah, loading. Good. I remember it doing this on my N95. So. 
So this would mean that this display is a 320 by 240 display because this application is a 176 by 144. But now we're at the point where can't select anything, can't do anything, we're stuck. But at least it plays games. I say play games very loosely. It, it, it displays games. <laughs> You've got Puzzle to back you up, though. That, that's a positive, I guess. Sorry, I completely forgot we're going to be jumping around here. Uh, images. I've completely forgot about images. Uh, yep. It was set on two, I think. Yep. I believe these are all ripped off the 2G, I believe. They should be, anyways. Let's get to the fish. I want to set them as the wallpaper. There they are. Okay. Beautiful. Done. So now, as for this one here, we have basically looked through everything. Showed you the ringtone, showed you the settings, done the camera test, played some games, sort of, on it, and all that sort of stuff. There's not a lot going on this one. So just remember, this one's exactly the same hardware as the other two. But the Fuji Zone one has slightly different software. So I'll go ahead and switch this one off. Slide to power off, by the way. Boop. Can I repeat that? Nope. Good. Okay, we're good now. Alrighty. So our photo viewer touch super mega digital photo viewer can go over there and we can launch our Fuji Zone. I wonder if Fuji Zone actually made any other devices or not, or if that's just a weird brand that they just stuck on a couple of them, who knows. All right, let's stick the SD card in. Now, you're obviously going to see a lot of edits and cuts and everything. It's because the touchscreen is horrendous on this. There we go. Take a deep breath. Serenity. Peace. Ah. So, this one has something that the other one doesn't have. Browser. But let me just... Show the touch. You gotta got give it some time. It takes a while of stuffing around, but it does work. So I'm gonna try and go through this as quickly as I can. But we've got calendar, picture, camera, camera rec, setting, clock, P book, calculator, note, user pro, FTV, Java, fun, file, timer, FM, Yahoo, Twitter, eBuddy, alarm, Bluetooth. Oh, don't stuff up on me now. Okay, I fixed it. So you just press your thumb right there, which is where the flex ribbon connector is, and it works. So we've got ring, MSN, wallpaper, and recorder. So let's go through these. We're only going to be focusing on the ones that are most important. So if I open up camera, there it is there. See? No settings or anything. You can't do anything. So that's why I chose the i9 one instead of this one, because that's all it displays. There's no settings. You can't scroll or anything. That's all it is. We'll come to settings quickly, just have a look. It does look different, but there's a couple of things that are slightly changed. It's the same operating system, of course. Oh, should we? Oh, wait, I can't play them? There we go. They're the ringtones that are installed on this. But otherwise, I think for settings, there's not much else. We'll have a look and see if it's been paired with anything. C5212, don't know what that is. Probably some sort of other device. Wallpaper, system, same wallpapers. Where's the fish? Where's the fish? No. There they are. All right, let's come into user pro. Oh, user pro is just profiles. Okay, I get it. User profiles, but they've done user pro. I thought it was some sort of record, you know, melody composer or something. No, it's not. Okay, there's nothing in notes, so let's scroll over. Let's open up FTV. Oh, Java game. Or something. What are you? What do you do? Oh, Opera Mini. Okay. That's interesting. Wow. This device was last used probably 2008, 2009, but in history there's something called Orkut. 
O-R-K-U-T. You can see it right there, Orkut, and it was Navneet that owned this phone. So Navneet, you left your history on here. You didn't delete it. That's okay. Probably because the touch screen stopped working and then you threw it out. But that's Opera Mini on this thing. Oh, my thumb is getting extremely sore from holding that there. So, um, I've got an idea. Let's see if this works. Okay, um, well, to demonstrate the, the rest of the iPhone, we're going to be just using it like this now. Okay, let's go into Java. <laughs> EMSN, oh my god. Let's have a look at EMSN. Uh, just ignore the peg. <laughs> wow. I remember MSN. I remember I used to spend hours on there talking to people. Oh, no, it died again. Okay, I took the peg off and now it works again. Okay, let's go into fun. Games. Puzzle. Well, we know what this is, obviously. Oh, it's different. It's different. Holy moly. All right, I'll try puzzle again with sounds on. Same one. Okay, file manager. Uh, phone, yeah. Two megabytes. As I said, they're all the same hardware, but it's just a slightly different skin on the Java OS. Timer. Looks slightly like the uh, 2G, except it looks a little bit cut off just here. Close enough, it's good. Uh, FM, please plug in earphone. That's looking closer to the 2G. Yahoo, connection failed because we don't have a SIM in here. That's not going to work. Twitter, not going to work, which is sad. What is eBuddy? What do you do? Oh, damn it. be interesting to know what half of these do, actually. Alarm, nothing special. Bluetooth, we've already had a look at. Ring, we've already had a look at. MSN, which is the same as the eMSN I had a look at earlier. Wallpaper, already had a look at. And Recorder, they're getting close. And finally, Browser, we got to see more on Opera Mini, to be honest. So, music-wise, let's see if we can open this up. Yeah, Paramera. It's slightly louder, but it's sort of the same tinny quality sort of thing. All right, so that is all of the applications on the Fuji Zone 1. I'm not going to open up anything else because I don't really need to. I'm not going to test um, the camera or anything because it's only just going to drag on longer and longer. But I just wanted to show the other apps that are installed on this one and uh, the method of getting the touchscreen to work. It works. But yeah, otherwise, this one has more of an iPhone 2G feel, but as I said, same Java OS, just a different skin, and there's no real improvements. Still the same hardware, still the same crappy speaker at the top. But for 2008, though, you're getting to a point where you could start to fool people, sort of. If they had a look at the back of it, yeah, obviously not. But just looking at it here, kind of does. Kind of does look like iPhone OS, a little bit. So turn it off, switch it off, slide. There we go. Oh, I know that ringtone. I wonder where they pinched that one from. Photo viewer touch super thing, and there's a Fuji Zone one. So I've been through the applications on both. I've tested them both. Um, just comparing them side by side. See the similarities pretty much right there. That has a silver button. This has a black one. But as I said at the start of the video, they're basically the exact same device. Honestly, nothing special about these ones. It's just that I had three of them, and I figured three for part three would make sense because... The other ones that we have, now they get really, really weird. They'll be coming soon, don't worry. But they do work, and they do offer WAP internet features, and you can install Java games, which is surprising, but you can't use any unless they're optimized for using touch, which a lot of them back then didn't. They all used the numeric keypad and the D-pad and stuff, so it's pretty much useless sort of thing. But... There you go, just wanted to show them off as part of this whole series, and I hope I've covered everything that I needed to on these ones. So, overall conclusion, they're usable, they work. Well, the Fuji Zone one doesn't, and the other one doesn't really work either, but they work, and that's the main point of it. So then we draw our attention to this one here, because we're going to tear this one down. Now, as I said, this one is waterlogged, and if you're wondering what happens when you put a battery in here, it does do the startup tone, but there's no display. So it's pretty much useless. So removing the plastic frame just like that, 
and the button just falls out, just like that. We'll get our first look at the insides. There's the damage, just there. And as you can see, I've already taken the shielding off to see what's going on, but... Yeah. Oh well. So having a closer look at the proprietary USB port, there's the pins there. And there should be 12 there if I'm counting correctly. Bit of a look there. You can see it. Just the inside there. It is definitely not a standard USB port. It is something weird. As I said, made in China, for China. It's proprietary. Uh, we've got our camera here, which is... What's that say? There's the code there. So if you want to Google that code, feel free. I thought the flex ribbon ended right there. I thought the pins were on this, but no, it's on that. It's got the little extended bit. So there you go. That is interesting. We have the chips on here, but this is not the CPU and it's not the RAM. As I said, I'll take photos of them and put the codes at the end. So if you wanted to have a Google yourself, you can do that. But what I want to do is actually pull the board off because it doesn't work anyways. So I can be a little bit more dangerous per se with this one. So let me go ahead and do that. Got it. Okay. There's our CPU there, the MediaTek MT6225A. And we have a expansion module, which I believe was on the first one. But there's the codes there. And as I said, I will make sure that you guys will see all the codes at the end of the video. So you can have a Google of them and I'll be able to tell you what they are. But otherwise, that's the display just there. The speaker is just right there. Coin style vibration motor just there. And the touch is literally just this tiny, tiny little flex ribbon leading into there. That's all. And the home button is this just dangly floppy button. Uh, we've got another MediaTek chip here. Actually, looking at this, the shielding has already been pried off, so I've already been in here. I just didn't show it on camera when I took it apart years ago. So, yeah, I've already done it. There's your home button there. Just stick you back there. Beautiful. I've got a spare camera if the other ones die. <laughs> ah, just being slightly optimistic. All right, well, I'm done with this. I don't care if it's even more damaged than before. It's fine. This one was just used for disassembly purposes. All right, well, that is it, folks. That is all of them done. So if you want to learn the specs, you might want to pause the video here. Have a look at it all. All the codes are going to be listed here for everything if you want to have a Google and see if there's any research you want to do yourself. But all the specifications listed are pretty much as close as I'm going to get to these. I'm pretty sure they're spot on. But if anyone wants to make any corrections, please do so in the comments below. Well, I can't really say much more about these iPhone 2G clones. I've tested everything, and as I said, they sort of look like the 2G a little bit, getting there. You ain't seen nothing yet, because trust me, the next two, man. <laughs> Just to give you a hint, one's a dual screen one, and one has something that wasn't introduced on an iPhone until like 2013. That will be interesting. But as I said, if I've missed anything in the video, please let me know in the comments below. I think I'm gonna leave it here for this one. I think I've went on long enough and I've covered everything that I needed to. These ones weren't really that interesting per se. The next ones that do get far more interesting, as I said, I just wanted to do part three because I had three of them. That's all. Now that that's done, they go back in the box. I need to take a photo for the thumbnail and call it a video. So thank you very much for watching part three of the iPhone clone month. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed this because I'm enjoying doing this. It's a little bit difficult doing this schedule now, but I'm getting into the swing of it and I hope it's going to turn out to be a very impressive series for you all to enjoy and have a bit of a laugh at. And I just want to mention just for sort of the YouTube guidelines and stuff, I'm only showing these clone devices for entertainment purposes only. And I'm not promoting them. I'm just showing them for pure nostalgia and all that sort of stuff. In that regards, thanks again for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. Feel free to watch the other two parts in the series if you want to, or the other ones that I've uploaded in the phone archive. Take care, be good people, stay safe, and I'll see you all in a couple of days with some really weird iPhone clones, man. Really weird ones. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.